one of the most common questions that uh, that come up in pastoral ministry today is how do we deal with a smartphone? Um, it is uh, so pervasive. How do we how do we shepherd and disciple parents who are asking questions about their kids, uh, kids' use of smartphone, what age is the right uh, appropriate age to give a kid a smartphone, uh, what do you do when your middle schooler doesn't have a smartphone and everybody else in their class has complete internet access all the time, b- virtually lives online. Um, what, what counsel would you, you give to uh, 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 pastors and parents who, who are watching and wondering, um, how should how should we think through this? What should our practices be? Yeah. It's a catch twenty two because smartphones, the research is showing, is contributing to the loneliness epidemic uh, that, that Generation Z just identified recently as the loneliest generation. Uh, and yet, if you remove this, the the iPhone uh, or the smartphone from a kid then they're socially isolated because that's how that's how kids communicate and so seems to me at least that there's got to be a, a participatory aspect if the kids are going to be able to interact as their peers do but at the same time a counterculture um, model where um, you know you treat a phone in the home a lot like you do sugar um, you know in moderation it's not going to destroy you but 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 if it becomes a gluttony issue, it could lead to all kinds of health problems. And, and so I, I, I think for us, I don't know about you with your kids, uh, uh, but um, for us, it's been a challenge uh, to help our kids think counterculturally because it's such an enmeshed thing. So uh, what, I look forward to ages, hearing what you guys say. What, what ages are you thinking? 20 and 15 for us. Okay. And so we've kind of lived the journey um, and it's, it's been a challenging one. Yeah. And ours range from 17 to 6. Uh, we don't give smartphones uh, to our kids. And, and the reason for that is because some of, the, some of the issues that Scott mentions, but also because what I have found is that most Christian parents who are grappling with, do I give a smartphone to my child or not? The real issue, if you peel it back, is I don't want my child to be left out uh, from, from what's happening with the other kids in a way that I think is is ultimately short-sighted, especially if we understand and know what all can potentially uh, happen with smartphones. Parents who think, well, uh, they have to be familiar with this, they have to get, uh, they're able to get ready for that uh, at at an age-appropriate time. You're not going to hold them back from being able to figure out digital technology, Um, nor are you going to be able to isolate them in a way where they're never going to face those things. But you have to do it at at a time in which kids are prepared to deal not just with the the porn issue, but also with the kind of uh, silent bullying that can go on. Not the not the what we think of as cyberbullying, but just that sense of constant adrenaline uh, 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 being up about what do people think of me, which every teenager uh, faces. But now there's a way to verify or to think one can verify it uh, 24 hours a day. I think we need to help help kids prepare and shape the kind of character that's resilient enough to, to deal with that. So we don't. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I think we, a lot of times when we are thinking about this issue, we're, we're thinking only about the content that's going to be accessed through the phone and not what the formative influence of the phone actually is mm-hmm. on, on a person. And I think we, I, one of the uh, things we, we ought to consider is just how formative the phone's are for parents, mm-hmm. not right. just for, for kids. So it's one thing uh, that when we talk about moderation, I, a lot of us as adults really need to consider how uh, addicted we are to, to our phones or to affirmation through social media or through all of the, the different ways that, that we're on. Um, but it, it, we, we gotta move beyond just how can I protect my, my child from bad content coming in? That's, that's one important step. But um, the 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 I think what you were saying about the the the, the culture of of um, uh, silent bullying or always mm. just the just the fact that you're always online that you you um, there used to be you could go home after a day of school in middle school or high school where things were tough and 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 you had something of a refuge something of a of a place to um, to to unplug from all of that. Mm-hmm. 
but with um, uh, chatting and uh, texting and everything that is going on now uh, for the life of a teenager, you go from one world to another world and there's virtually no no off. And I, I, I do wonder if that has contributed some to the loneliness, uh, the feeling of, of loneliness and the epidemic. And you say, if everybody is out there all the time and connected, how could we possibly feel lonely? And the, the answer to that is a lo- the portrayal that, that kids are learning to put online is not, they know that's not really me deep down, right? And so they feel, um, if they feel affirmed, the affirmation is hollow because, well, they don't see all of me. And if they feel shamed, then, then they have that, that, the pressure that comes along with that as well. Yeah, this is the first generation in my lifetime where the personal brand uh, has become a thing. Uh, And there is so much monitoring of how's my brand doing. And I I do think the risk of of youthful engagement, uh, uh, assuming that we haven't gotten there yet in terms of just the ability to handle it and and to fight addiction and so on, um, creates this... um, you know, likes, fans, followers equals friendship, equals intimacy, equals being part of community. Um, and it's not. It really does short circuit um, the design uh, in which we've been made to be, you know, as uh, my friend Russ Ramsey uh, and colleague Russ Ramsey says, to, to look at faces more than you look at screens. Um, you know, that's how he's shepherding his own kids. And I think that's right on. But not frequently practiced. Well, and somebody who, uh, the whole foundation of my spiritual life was shaped in adolescence. And one of the things I look back and, and see is that God was working the most in my life when I was suffering or when I was bored. Uh, and, and that sense of, of boredom led to a kind of, of searching. Now we're in a time where boredom itself is to be uh, completely avoided. And we use technology in order to distract ourselves from ever having those moments of uh, that, that actually do lead to to searching and questing uh, for something that's often very meaningful. Well, one of the things that I'm I'm constantly we're having this conversation in our family a lot, and our, our kids know about this is that uh, so many times we see relaxation today as just passive consumption, yeah. consumption of entertainment, consumption of video games on a phone, or consumption of uh, and and trying to to uh, create a culture where we are taking joy in cultivating or creating something as well, where consumption has its place uh, and the phone can be part of that. But if we're moving to distraction over our own development or developing something or cultivating or making something, then we're, we're, we're missing out on an essential part of what it means to, mm-hmm. uh, to, to uh, bear the image of God, to reflect God in the different ways that, that we can. And so the uh, part of the danger of the phone, I would say, is more distraction, not just, um, that, not just the, the dangers of what might come through the phone. So, well, thank you for, for um, helping us think through this.